welcome to River's Harvest, and I have my good friends Trace and Michelle Erickson with me today, and they're going to share some of their testimony about what God has done in Trace's life. And it uh, all started out probably last summer, Trace, when I accidentally made a phone call, and who was on the other line? I was. And, um, it was amazing. It was a God moment. It's kind of what Andy and I have come up with this. Uh, I've been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and uh, it was that that Sunday. And uh, Pastor, you, you and I, you know, obviously, we not spoke for a while, probably a year and a half, two years since you know, yeah, I see it could have been several. Probably yeah. this, uh, you guys have been gone since about 2010, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And so it's been, and they moved over to Rushford, and they love the place they live. And they yes. have a beautiful and everything yep. was going great. Yep. And then you got this diagnosis. And yeah. It, it, you you pump the brakes, I, I, I say. Um, so we were diagnosed in, on August 8th. I mean, anyone that's been diagnosed with cancer or is a, is a spouse or, or a child, you know, you know the day. You'll never forget it. Um, so our world changed. Um, and and uh, I have prayed you know, countless times that I want to be the more spiritual leader possible as my wife is, is much more knowledgeable in the Word and I, I wanted to be in the Word and so I asked for that and uh, I'm in the Word and so on that, it was, it was a few days after, it was the Sunday after being diagnosed and, and uh, I was home alone and uh, just praying and doing a lot of thinking and the phone rang and I didn't recognize the number, and, but I'll, I'll know Pastor's voice. He, you know, he's my my home pastor when I was saved as a Christian. So uh, I answered the phone, and, and Andy's on the other line. And uh, he, I believe he was saying, "Steve." No, Dave. I was Dave. Gonna, that's why I had to call Steve over in Caledonia. Somehow I got your number, right? Yeah. And so we went back and forth as far, and I'm like, Andy, and he's like, Yeah, Dave. And I'm like, No, it's Trace. And he's like, Who? And I said, Trace Erickson, I was like, I'm sorry, and I don't know why I called you. And I think I said, I know why. Yeah. And uh, I shared my struggle and, and uh, the storm I was going through at the time. And, and I was all alone, like I, I said, and instantly Pastor was there for me. Now I'm going to get emotional during this, but um, he's like, well, I'm going to pray for you. And I was walking around on the phone nervous, and, and uh, I remember him praying. And he says, I'm going to have a team at your house of prayer warriors and uh, we're going to be okay and it was huge relief and uh, I can remember standing in the kitchen of my home and he was praying and I raised my right hand and I could feel heat go through my heart and uh, I just you know we concluded our conversation and I fell on my knees in the kitchen and started praying you know you know Lord just save me and you know thank you for all the blessings I had and I had a lot of peace. So that was on a Sunday. And uh, I believe it was Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. You had a prayer team at our house with oil and scripture. And, you know, my wife has been through this ride in front of me when she needed to be in behind me. So, um, you know, we, we are fortunate to live where we do. You know, we have wonderful hospitals around here. We opted to go with, with Mayo Clinic and um, after that that prayer and the, the ultimate prayers from everybody and that, that anointing that day, uh, you know, we, we started going through the doctor appointments and things like that. She started chemotherapy. Started chemotherapy. Our, our, our oncologist said that with this, you know, we, what we're going to do is we're going to go after it and we aggressively went after it. I was fortunate. I, I I'm blessed to have not been terribly sick. I, um, after chemotherapy, a couple days after, I feel like I've been kind of beat up a little bit, not puking, not, you know, thousands of people have it much worse than I do. Um, so I feel blessed that way. Did. So that started on, in uh, August 26th, and on the 16th, I believe, of November, through countless prayers by this church and, and the church I attend now, and, and uh, 
the children placed hands on me and prayed for me at my church, and the uh, pastor kept checking in. Uh, in November, uh, I was cancer-free. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Um, the oncologist said he wanted to continue with the last three treatments, which was in, in November, December, and January. Uh, so we had the treatment right after the diagnosis that we were cancer-free um, with a PET scan. We continued and we had those monthly treatments, once a month, uh, IV, no port. And so we finished up in the end of January. There was nothing in February. Um, March 7th, uh, we went in for a, a uh, PET scan and we, we saw, they call it a lesion that um, was in, on my liver. Um, it needs to be known that, that I had nothing in my bone marrow that was tested. We had nothing in any organs. and. So this was a big surprise to everybody. Right, because the existing cancer was gone. That never came back. Right. But there was something new showing up on his liver, and we could see it in the scan, too. Yep. I yes, saw. I saw a scan that lights up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so uh, when, you, when, when you saw that, what was your thought? What was your feeling that... that uh, My initial thought was, oh, no. And... Uh, but, you know, I dug deep. But I should say, you know, I, I was in the Word in November. Or, correction, I was in it in August. I was in it in September. I was in it in October. I was in it in November. And then, you know, life starts to happen. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and my wife and I talked about it in, in February. That, you know, I, I wasn't reading my Bible every day. I wasn't, I wasn't on my knees every day. And, and we talked about it before the diagnosis. And I, and I would never say God gave me cancer because that would never happen in a, ever. But, uh, you know, my prayers, I, I, in my words, I'm not holding up my end of the deal and uh, what I prayed for. And Satan, Satan will get in and he'll sneak in any way he can. And so just prior to that, I, I, I had a change. My wife and I said, you know, I'd said, I need to get back into that. I started down that road. And the diagnosis came, um, and, and at that point they didn't—they they don't know. They still don't know today if, if it's cancer, um, but it, it, it lit up. That, and that's what cancer usually does on those scans. Yep. Right. Um, yep. Put the glucose in it, so that's what yep. calls them it's cancer. It lights up the glucose. But I, and I asked my oncologist, and he says, "I'm not going to say." But he said there, there could be a number of other things that would would pop up, but we're just not going to say until we get a biopsy. But the fear comes upon you because Absolutely. you've been through this before. Yep. Bam! Yep. Uh, here it's come back, or here right. I'm dealing with this again. Right. Yeah. And shortly after, you know, I, and that's never a good thing, you know, and, and uh, there's, you know, there's so much hope in today um, for cancer survivors. And, and so, well, we, we got on our knees. And the uh, pastor was one of the first calls on me. And uh, he immediately, without waiver, says, well, we're going to call in the big guns. And, uh, you know, there's such peace. I have peace through this whole thing. And even after the initial scare, the ride home was quiet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you start to regroup and the enemy wants to sneak in. And they tell you, to don't, don't get on your phone. Don't start researching. No, you're going to. And then I, <laughs> I threw it yeah. and I said, no, God, you have this. Yeah. God's got this. And that's been our mantra through this whole thing. God has this. And uh, we turned it over to God. So as a small break, Michelle, what are you feeling during this fight? So from the beginning, the very first diagnosis, we were standing on Romans 8, 28. God will work all things together for the good. We, we were standing on that and trusting in that. Um, Chemotherapy as his wife was really hard for me. Um, after he was given a clean scan in November, going continuing with chemotherapy was um, just a pure act of support as a wife because I didn't believe it was the right thing to do. And also, the whole time, um, it was a struggle for me faith-wise because we were believing in prayer and yet we were going through chemotherapy. And I kind of felt like, are we putting our faith in the doctors, or are we putting our faith in God? And of course, you want to do everything that you can. Yep. Right? 
But to me, I feel like when the spot was on Tracy's liver, there was almost a gift of faith in that for us because we we were believing for it to not be there when he, the day he was going in for the biopsy. Yep. And we were uh, standing on our prayers and the prayers of the people surrounding us uh, that it wouldn't be there, which, you know, that's a struggle for your natural mind. I mean, by, minute by minute, you're thinking, it's not going to be there. God's got this. It's not going to be there. It's going to be a miracle. And then two seconds later, you're struggling with the fact that what are we going to do? Is he going back for chemotherapy again? So just that struggle back and forth and feeling like you're lacking faith was really hard. But to be told, I was out in the waiting room when Tracy went in for the scan, the liver biopsy. Yeah. Can we just hold up oh, yeah. until we get to the anointment from John? Yeah. You, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so you, you said we're calling in the magnets. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, uh, that gave me some peace. And through this whole thing, if I've said it once, I've said it 10,000 times. Fear's a liar. Yeah. I've sometimes had to you know, lay awake at night and say it repetitively. Yeah. Satan, I cast you out. I'm covered by the, by the blood of Jesus. I cast you out of my mind and it would go away. I would have instant peace and he'd creep back in and say it again with more you know more certainty and, and and I'd be able to sleep it's like that phrase courage is not the absence of fear but the ability to overcome it amen yeah yes and so Jesus was with me and I pray to put angels in the corner of our house and that's in every corner of every room you know to keep the demon out and and uh, you know that was our prayer at night so the pastor says well I'm gonna call him the big guns and uh, he calls um, John Kelson, and uh, I remember the name John Kelson as uh, he's been anointed by by Christ, and and because he's been here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, one speaker runs into another until it's important to you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's, the truth. that's the truth. And so, yeah. you know, I told Michelle, you know, this is where we're going. And he set it up, and he brought. Mike Morgan, you know, Mike has always been a staple in, in this church. And, and, you know, I remember when I went here, he's, he's a good man. He's, he's also a man. cancer survivor. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. And then my friend Dean. Dean. Yes. Yeah. And he's uh, freedom, freedom from most every drug that you could know of. But he's, yeah. he's living for God now. Yeah. And yeah. Just great men. Just yeah. support. I just felt the love. And, we crammed into my pickup and headed south to Postville, Iowa. Yeah. You know, we had a great fellowship on the way down and just faith. And, and it was great for my 13 year old son, our youngest son, to see this. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, that was important to us. I also that. thought of that throughout the day, you know, what is cold thinking mm -hmm. right now? Yeah. yeah. And he was there. Um, he's an extremely bright young man, very mature for his age. And when, and back in August, we started taking the, you know, and we told him to tell your 13-year-old son that your dad has cancer. That's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And he instantly cried. He said, we got this. Yeah. God's got this. And, this. and to be able to say that and mean it yeah. is amazing. So we're, we're in a, you know, we're, we're in a great mood to head south to Polsko. And, uh, so we're, we, we pulled up to the, the apartment complex in which John, John lives at. We all stopped at the restroom on the way in, so we knew we were in. And so he welcomed us in and sat down. And then, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to be really honest. Yeah. My first thought when I met John, and he's 93 years old, yeah. and I thought, mm -hmm. oh, God, it's just like you to bring us here to pray for him. Oh. <laughs> You know, he's had a life of praying for people, and now he's 93, and you know what? You probably orchestrated this so that yeah. we'd come and pray for him. That's, that's what I went into it thinking. And, and then he captured us. Yes. His mind is, is and I'm going to go out on a limb here, he was the sharpest 
person in the room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. His mind, as far as memory goes, and scripture, and detail. Of, of dates and dates, places and people and people's names. Oh. Yes. And I always, and I've said this, and I know personally from John is he has said I'm healthier today than I was in my 40s. Amen. I believe it. You know, yes. So it's yes. amazing. Uh, picture of health. And we were so encouraged. He just, as he shared testimony after testimony of healings that he has been used for, it was so encouraging. Yes. And, I mean, through all of the prayers that we've had from people, and we have been lifted up. But to have somebody, John, look at Tracy and speak with such certainty. Yes. Like, no doubt. Right. You, you're healed. Like, I, there was no yes. doubt. I've not, it, it was almost took my breath away. Yes. And the way he said it. Yes. It was something on the lines of, I saw darkness and a flash. And a flash of light came and the darkness was gone. Yes. Something like that. That was, that was amazing. That's yes. something that yes. had to be a God given thing. Yes. And, and as his wife, what stood out to me was when he looked at Tracy, he said, you are going to live to be an old man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amen. Old men together. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Like band of old men. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he, he asked me to scoop my chair up and he took my hands. And this is a, this is a man's man. He takes my hands and he starts praying. And I was just overwhelmed with emotion, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was just firm. And he spoke with certainty and and uh, and he he just it, well, there's obviously an anointment on that man's life yeah and, and you would love total peace we all want complete to peace with such peace it's like yeah i mean it was just complete peace and he he, he told us about the, he he sees it a couple different ways either a ticker tape goes across when he's praying or it's a flash and or then, not and then sometimes the healing can be instant, and sometimes yes. it's a process. Yes, yeah. and that st stuck with me. Yeah, I, I hear, in fact, um, Tracy was really bummed because they he, they were supposed to call us to schedule the biopsy, and they pushed it off. So it was going to be pushed back further than what he wanted. And I was relieved, actually. I said, honey, that's good. That's good, because maybe it needs a few days, so let's just trust that just th this is God's timing on this. Right. So then can we jump to the day of the biopsy? Sure. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and before we do, um, you know, I obviously had witness to this, this, what we believe to be an instant healing, yeah. is that uh, I work for a sheriff's office, and I walked into my sheriff, who's a Christian, and I said, can I talk to you a minute? And he knows everything up to the minute, except for the... The, the healing and I said uh, I need to talk to you about something he's like yeah go ahead and uh, I said I'm going to witness to you because I want you to know this as a, as a man to man this is what happened and I went through the whole thing and he and, he, and he's been through this journey with me he's my boss and, and uh, I told him about the about John Kittleson and the healing and he sat back and he just took it in and he said well I'm praying that it, that it is Yes. So he was one of the first calls. Right, so you told him before we even went for the biopsy so yes. that you would have somebody who was an outside yeah. witness. Witness to this, because I, cause I said, I'm going to be back with an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we get up on, on the, the 18th of March here a few days ago, and uh, Michelle and I drive up, and, it, and we're, we're confident. Mm -hmm. However God is going to heal this, if he's going to heal it, if it's non-cancerous, if he's going to take it away, it, you know, it's his. It's in his hands. We went in with some expectation. It was. Yeah. It was there. It was bubbling underneath the surface. Yeah. It was like a peace covered expectation, and I. Yeah. I didn't even really want to voice it. Like we're going to have a miracle today, but it was like this expectation. Like is God, is God going to really do this? Is yeah. this? Are we going to really see this happen today? And, and I'm humble. Uh, you know, I, I've done nothing special in my life except believe. And uh, I've been, always been a hardcore believer until I started at this church. Um, and that's a whole other testimony, but uh, 
you know, and I knew where I needed to go. And I, I don't know how, how somebody can, can go through this type of trial and tribulation in their life without God in their life. Yeah. I, I couldn't have done it. Yeah, I, I don't know where I'd be. I'd be a wreck. And without a support group, a Christian support group. So we're at the hospital. We check in. Said they're going to do a biopsy. They give us a gown and uh, wheel me down. She, she could go in for a little bit. And then they, they kicked her out. And they gave you a number in the waiting room. You could see what the procedure And they said, 45 minutes. The doctor gives me the quick Reader's Digest. We're going to want eight or nine samples. It's going to be a long needle. We'll give you a local. Uh, you'll be awake the whole time. They'll find the tumor with, the, with ultrasound. Yep. That's how they will. And then they'll guide it in. And, and you'll hear a series of clicks where they're taking a core sample out of the lesion, the tumor, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so he parts ways. He says, I'll see you in a few minutes. So that I'm in there. And the ultrasound lady is, is there. And, uh, um, and then there's two nurses. And we're talking just like we're talking. It's good. And uh, so they they put up the gown just below my, my sternum is where your liver lies off to the and and obviously the Mayo Clinic has that liver graft yeah. right down to to every little speck. So they know where it is on the graph in comparison to the PET scan where it was and the C T scan because we've had both and it was on both exactly. The and, same and they're coming from the perspective they don't want to tell you but this is not good news, right? Yeah, they're, I mean they're they're you can read your faces. Yes. Yeah. This is uh this is uh you know, we're going to go through the procedure and, and I'd had a biopsy when I was diagnosed and and the look on people's faces I, I mean You recognize it? Yeah, yeah. You know, they can't hide it. They're not so they're going through it and and instantly I see the concerned look on the the gal that's running the ultrasound. She, that's her job. She's a professional. She's a <laughs> and uh, I'm making small talk. And, and now she says, can you lay on your side? I'm like, sure. I lay on my side. And I'm just kind of keeping her in my peripheral. And she's going over. And, and she's clicking on the machine and going over and just different angles and telling me to take deep breaths in. And then puts me back on my back. And uh, so then... You know, she's trying to take pictures, and she, she, I just asked her, I said, you just have a problem finding it? She's like, yeah. And uh, he said, is that common? No, not really, but, you know, I'm just, <laughs> she keeps going. And, I love that question. Yeah. Is that common? Yeah. That's good. And uh, so then she goes and gets my original doctor that said I was going, he was going to take eight or nine biopsies. And, and I think that's important here in the, in the end. So um, he comes in. And uh, so he, he, he's, he's professional, but she whispers that imaging is not going the way we want it to. I'm having trouble finding it. in the left quadrant, I remember saying. And, and uh, so they're, they're talking. And uh, he kind of gives the top. Let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> take care of this. Yeah. So he starts and he gets the same concerned look. And he's pushing kind of hard, telling me to take deep breaths. And this goes on for quite some time. And... Uh, I'm taking a hundred deep breaths, literally 25, 30 deep breaths. <laughs> and uh, on my side, on my back, and then he makes kind of a, or she does ask for now a, a, a more senior doctor, I would say by her age, she comes in and, and the same thing. She's like, oh, the imaging. And she's like, okay, uh, and she's got this. <laughs> <laughs> so she starts looking and she can't find it. So then they ask, they come up with the idea that they can put a, uh, it's a some sort of a, a dye, we'll call it, but it's a different imaging, a different color, but that fades relatively fast. So they're staring at exactly where it's supposed to be. They have it marked out on this on the ultrasound scan, and uh, um, they're trying to find it. Now the original ultrasound gal has it, and he said, "Well, uh, uh, we're not finding the spheres, and, and uh, we think it might be here, but." It's like anything, if you stare at something long enough, you can believe it's there. And you know, we, we, we're not certain enough to do a biopsy. Is that what you told them? Yeah, that's what, yeah. And I said, you might not think this is relevant, or <laughs> and you might think I'm crazy, but I'm going to tell you, I had prayer this weekend, and, and uh, we came into this, and it's gone. And they all look at me like I have two heads. Yeah. And Tao taught me, and go, that's nice. 
but they're they're frustrated yeah because this is a medical science that, that it should be there and so the, the one nurse comes up and I can feel her put her hand on my left arm and she kind of squeezes it like I believe it is how I felt. Is that the nurse that came on to talk to me? No, that was the CTO. Okay. But but you know and, and she's not saying anything because she's the she's supposed to find this and now there's two very intelligent doctors or very qualified doctors. And so they keep looking, keep looking, and then they step out, they said they're gonna call my oncologist. So they call him. And uh, they come back with with more vigor, like we can do this. <laughs> so, so we're gonna we're gonna set set the needle up and and enter it into your body here. It's it's, it's about this long. Uh, and uh, and they did a local, and it's gonna be uncomfortable. Oh my God, I'm okay with uncomfortable. And they said they're gonna get right where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping to get one. So they've gone from eight or nine samples to hope to get one. Yeah. And so they're, they're kind of reaching in. And so um, she said, you know, we're gonna call in the specialist and he's gonna look at it and he's gonna try to find it just before. So he's the third doctor that tried to find it on the ultrasound. He didn't look as long and he's like, yeah, it's not there, you're right. And, and while this is going on, at some point, was it yeah. the nurse or the, yeah. some technician came out to, let me know what was going on and why it was taking so long. The, the ultrasound lady, it's now been an hour. And I said, then we're supposed to be down in 45 minutes and we're not even close to the end. I said, so, you have to tell my wife. Michelle's in the way you're ever dancing. Said, well, not at this point. She's probably concerned. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I said, you have to tell my wife. So the ultrasound gal says, I'll oh, tell her. And she comes back and she goes, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. And she's tearing up. And uh, I said, is she okay? And she goes, you have quite a wife. <laughs> and she's in the, the, she's saying hallelujah or whatever you said. And she's like, started telling me, we've had prayer. And she's saying, I've heard. <laughs> so, yeah. I said to her, she said, we, we can't find it. And I said, of course you can't. We've had so much prayer. And she, she said, that's what I've heard. Yeah. yeah. So she come in, kind of tears in her eyes, but she's she's keeping it together and uh, super nice scale. And so they they get the needle ready and they're going to put the imaging where they think they might have seen it, but they're not sure. And so the the doctor, the, the, the female doctor, is there and she's like, okay. And they said, put the imaging in, and they're ready. And I'm waiting to hear a click because when they when they drive the needle in. It's hollow, and they'll take a sample. There'll be a click, so they'll they'll grab a sample, a core sample of the, the tumor, and I don't hear a click, and I don't hear it. And they said the imaging's gone after about 10, 15 seconds. Wouldn't they say, "Is that a shadow of something? Is that a shadow of something?" Yeah. <laughs> Which I just think is so cool. Yeah, that had been going on, you know, with this up there, and they're all pointing, and you know, and it's not. Yeah. And so I said, "Did you get it?" said unfortunately we did not we cannot see it mm -hmm. and I was like thank you Jesus yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. so the cool thing yes. is to me for my faith like I look back at the whole chemo the time that he was healed of the original cancer yep. and we thank God for that healing yes. but he was also having chemotherapy so I feel like I always felt like our testimony of God healing him was almost tainted because the next question is, oh, well, did he go through chemotherapy? Yeah, yeah. and, and took away from the truth. Yeah, and so I feel like with this second tumor, the liver issue, the lack of the tumor being there, I feel like it was God just saying, see, it, it was a faith builder for me. It, yes. it really was. That's right. I was really in this. Yeah. And you can't, yeah. you know, can't call it chemotherapy. Right. A word in season. Yes. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the rhema of God. And this was a rhema to you. Yes. yes. This was something that was for you to build your faith, to encourage you. Right. And yes. I, I also want to say, I don't know no Trace a long time, yeah. but he's had words about reaching a lot of people. Yeah. And this is kind of the stepping stone right. or, or, you know, the acceleration for that happening. Now you've got a testimony of what God's done. 
and you can witness and share what God's done in your life about anything. It's the right. healing power of Jesus. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and, and at the beginning of this too is that was our, you know, when we say God, God has this, God has this, is that, um, you know, this is going to be an amazing testimony. You know, we yes. said that when you came up. Yeah. God's going to use us. God's going to use for it at the end. And so that's what was amazing when, when John and Andy and Mike and Dean all in the show and my son Cole, you know, prayed for me. And, and you know, it, it, is, it is an amazing testimony because, uh, you know, God has this. And I'm, 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 I'm just like, it was a huge weight off my shoulders and, and there's just great peace. Yeah. And so you're in awe. And you're in water. Yes. yes. Amen. Sounds like Jesus to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were seriously that whole first day. Yeah. I was almost, I, I was speechless. I didn't even really want to talk to anybody. Yeah. You just feel like so overwhelmed. It's so, it's so good to be, it's too good to be true. So yes. Yes. You know, yes. 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 Yeah. 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 You know, I, I just said it, you know, when this happens, I'm going to scream it at the top of the moment. Just remember yelling and, and you know talking to you and you were like yes <laughs> you know and you had left a message and, and it, it's a great testimony it's hey, a, and I say it's to you God, yes I don't do that. and you yes. say it with you just yes, so don't put it on speakerphone and you say it along with you in the car <laughs> yep. and, uh, yeah we filmed it and, um, it's it's amazing God is there's nothing God can do and, and like I said I, I, I don't know what I do without without Jesus Christ in my life because I couldn't have made it in two days in a row without being crazy. Yes. Because it's so much pressure to have such a wonderful family and church family. And yes. Thank you. Well, I'll just end by saying that if you are needing a miracle in your life, Jesus yes. can do that miracle. Just find someone that has faith and stand with him or her to believe for that miracle. That's what the body of Christ is for. Thanks, Trace. Thanks, Michelle. I love you. Love you. Okay.